Okay, we start with Angelo Sala, who effectively is responsible for the building blocks for the invention of photography. So one of uh, Sala's primary areas of study uh, concerned chemical identity and the role of atoms in chemical changes. His experiments with silver nitrate and silver salts were an important step towards the invention of the photographic process. In 1614, he demonstrated that powdered silver nitrate is blackened by the sun, as well as paper that was wrapped around it. This discovery of the sun and its effects on powdered silver nitrate was not supported and was subsequently disregarded by then respected scientists, saying that his discovery had no practical application. Strangely enough, there is a very practical application for his discovery, and that is the prominent use of silver nitrate in the practice of alchemy. Robert Boyle had made a similar observation previously, but mistakenly believed that the darkening resulted from exposure to air rather than light. It was not until Sala's discovery was combined with the optical works of many other chemists, however, that photography was finally invented in the 1830s. His work was a major step towards a better understanding of chemical reactions and the realisation that some substances are composed of chemical combinations of other substances. In 1625, Sala pursued his research interests in conjunction with his service as the personal physician to Johann Albrecht, Duke of Mecklenburg in Gustau. After 1636, as physician to Johann Albrecht's successor, Duke Gustav Adolf in Butzau. That's a name that's died out. Somewhere between years 1200 and 1600, a group of scientists discovered a variety of silver-containing chemicals and came up with silver nitrate. They had made the discovery that silver nitrate was photosensitive. The study of all these years was structured and formed in an official way by Wilhelm Homburg in 1694. He successfully named it the photochemical effect. Johann Heinrich Schultz. During the Middle Ages, alchemists had noticed the darkening of silver salts when exposed to the light and used them to colour various materials, such as wood and ivory. However, it was at the time of the Renaissance that alchemists discovered silver chloride when a certain Fabricius noticed in 1566 that it turned dark blue in the light. The first scientific study on the reactions of certain chemical compounds of silver was published in 1727 by Johann Heinrich Schultz, a German professor of anatomy interested in chemistry, who was certainly the first to establish that light reacts on silver salt and thus open the way to photography. In 1725, the first discovery of importance was made by Johann Heinrich Schultz, a professor of anatomy at the University of Altdorf. He had mixed powdered chalk into a solution of nitric acid in an attempt to make a phosphorescent material, the aluminous stone of the alchemist uh, Balduin. And he was amazed to discover that the mixture turned dark violet in sunlight. He traced a discoloration to a contaminant in the acid, silver, and eventually proved that silver compounds were visibly changed by the action of light rather than heat or exposure to air as had been previously suggested. Schultz made numerous stencil prints on the sensitive contents of his bottles, uh, but apparently he never applied the solutions to paper or made any attempt to record natural images. 1777, Carl Wilhelm Scheele, the Swedish chemist, investigated the properties of silver chloride and made some interesting discoveries. Like Schultz, he established that the blackening effect on his silver salt was due to light, not heat. He also proved that the black material was metallic silver, and he noted that ammonia, which was known to dissolve silver chloride, did not affect the blackened silver. If Scheele had realised the importance of this last discovery, he could very well have become the inventor of photography, uh, because by this time the essential processes were known. Thomas Wedgwood, possibly the first photographer, 1771 to 1805. Thomas Wedgwood was an early experimenter in the field of photography. He is the first person known to have thought of creating impermanent pictures by capturing camera images on material coated with a light sensitive chemical. 
His practical experiments yielded only shadow image photograms that were not light fast. But his conceptual breakthrough and partial success have led some historians to call him essentially the very first photographer. Thomas Wedgwood was British, born in Etruria, Staffordshire, UK, as the son of Hosiah Wedgwood, a family of pottery manufacturers. It is believed that he spent much of his life with painters, sculptors and poets, to whom he was able to be a patron after he inherited his father's wealth in 1795. The young Wedgwood became interested in methods of child education. He soon concluded that most of the information that young brains absorbed came through the eyes and were thus related to light and images. Seems somewhat obvious now, but okay. Capturing images with light. Thomas Wedgwood is also the first known person to have used light-sensitive chemicals to capture silhouette images on durable media, such as paper and the first known to have attempted to photograph the image formed in a camera, Obscura. However, the date of his first experiments in photography is unknown, but it is believed that he indirectly advised James Watt on the practical details prior to 1800. It is assumed that Wedgwood was advised by Alexander Chisholm and members of the Lunar Society during his chemistry experiments with paper and white leather coated with silver nitrate. However, Wedgwood's primary objective was to capture real-world scenes with a camera obscura, but those attempts were unsuccessful. However, he indeed succeeded in using exposure to direct sunlight to capture silhouette images of objects in contact with the treated surface, as well as the shadow images cast by sunlight uh, passing through paintings on glass. In both cases, the sunlit areas rapidly darkened while the areas in shadow did not. In Bristol, Wedgwood met Humphrey Davy. Davy wrote up his friend's work for publication in London's Journal of the Royal Institution, entitled An Account of a Method of Copying Paintings Upon Glass and of Making Profiles by the Agency of Light Upon Nitrate of Silver, invented by T. Wedgwood Esquire. Even though Wedgwood and the published work influenced and inspired many future photographers, the experimenter himself was unable to fix his pictures to make them immune to the further effects of light. Therefore, unless kept in complete darkness, they would slowly but surely darken all over, eventually destroying the image. As Humphrey Davy put it in his paper of 1802, the picture, immediately after being taken, must be kept in some obscure place. It may indeed be examined in the shade, but in this case, the exposure should be only for a few minutes. By the light of candles and lamps, as commonly employed, it is not sensibly affected. Although unfixed, photographs can be preserved by indefinitely storing them in total darkness and protecting them from the harmful effects of prolonged open exposure to the air, for example by keeping them tightly pressed between the pages of a larger book. In imperfect health as a child and a chronic invalid as an adult, Thomas Wedgwood died in the county of Dorset at the age of only 34. From a different source, this next bit is from a book source about Tom Wedgwood, as he calls him in the book rather than Thomas. Jacques Charles, fleeting silhouette photograms circa 1801. French balloonist, professor and inventor Jacques, or Jacques Charles, is believed to have captured fleeting negative photograms of silhouettes on light sensitive paper at the start of the 19th century, prior to Wedgwood. Charles died in 1823 uh, without having documented the process, but purportedly demonstrated it in his lectures at the Louvre. It was not publicised until François Arago mentioned it at his introduction of the details of the daguerreotype to the world in 1839. He later wrote that the first idea of fixing the images of the camera obscura or the solar microscope with chemical substances belonged to Charles. Later historians probably only built on Arago's information, and much later, the unsupported year 1780 was attached to all of his experiments. Lastly, the first world negative, non-fixed, record belongs to Anisafor Nieps. He positioned at the back of the camera obscura sheets of silver salts coated paper, known to blacken with daylight. In May 1816, he produced the first image of nature, a view from a window. It was a negative, and the image vanished because in broad daylight the coated paper becomes completely black. 
He calls these images retinas. Seeking to obtain positive images, uh, Neeps turned towards compounds that are bleached by light instead of blackened. He then tried with salts and iron oxide, as well as manganese black oxide. Even though he got some results, he stumbled over the fixing problem, which arises when he tried uh, to eliminate the initial chemical that had not been transformed by light yet. To solve this problem, he tried to find a method that would make him obtain images etched onto a base. To do this, he researched the effects of light on acids in the hope to observe their decomposition. Based on these results, he thought he could simply spread acids on calcareous stones whose strength would vary with light intensity and etch the stone more or less according to the hues of the image projected. However, acids are not decomposed by light, so this attempt was yet another failure. Nevertheless, it allowed Neeps to understand that it is not necessary to use a compound whose photochemical transformation is visible to the naked eye, and that even an invisible change of chemical properties under light action may induce the appearance of an image during a reaction, either with the base or another compound. As a consequence, Neeps got interested by all substances that interact with light. And, of course, he paved the way for the invention of modern photography, which I've covered on the earlier tiers of the iceberg. I hope you all learnt something new there. That was absolutely fascinating and um, just something totally different for this iceberg, I think. Really look forward to doing the very last two, which will probably be in a similar kind of documentary format as opposed to reactions. Bye for now.